Alright, money, this is how it goes down. We're gonna talk about Alabama and how they are slipping after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that that corner sh. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on the step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related. Sports related, we have a good time. Some of y'all are stuck inside, and the roast of y'all that are outside need to be inside you screwing this up for the rest of us because as many of you know the landscape continues to change news continues to pop off we got stuff going on globally but inside of our little bubble that is college football centric the sec has canceled not only all of its remaining spring sports but spring football game no word yet on spring football practice which could happen in may but first we got to get to may and that's kind of the point here right it's march 17th it feels like it's like been March all year because of the way that things have been going down. This is how it goes down. Speaking of this is how it goes down, if you need a laugh at this particular juncture, there is one in the comments below, Cardi B, and my homeboy that remixed this into what I think is the best lounge act I've ever seen. Please, give it your time if you need a giggle. Share it with your loved ones. Many of y'all are real cool about just hanging out on this channel, listening to what I got to say watching re-uploaded segments, which I genuinely appreciate because, well, I think some of this stuff gets missed and not everybody's got time for like an hour and a half live stream, though I'm going to be doing more live streams with more people that I like. Shout out to uh, Laurel and Ron who sat through. Also going to try to get my cousin Rico to come on here because he's a big Tennessee fan. You know the Tennessee and Oklahoma go and play college football game later this year. We think, but in the we think, we think Alabama is going to have a pretty good 2021 class, but I'm here to tell you, it don't look like that right now. This ain't one of them like looper videos where I'm just going to be like, oh, let me unpack how Alabama's college football class was destroyed. Even as the, I admit that the headline to this one is probably a little aggressive, but you know what it is. I mean, the headlines is how YouTube works. Speaking of YouTube works, you're going to see a lot of changes on their end. And by changes, I mean, you're going to see some videos go up in smoke, not on this channel because this channel is very safe and this channel is a wildly good actor on the platform but because they got to work from home like the rest of us and again if you're not working from home what are you doing and where are you watching this i appreciate it because you're probably watching this in a confined space and you probably haven't gone to talk to your boomer parents which i really appreciate because i want them people to live like you know my man lavelle with the seatbelt coming across the chest if you don't know that bit lavelle about 400 pounds dude had a seatbelt and the seatbelt was like you know real tight because he a big dude and they said why are you breathing so hard? He said, because I want to live. And that's kind of where we're at right now. I think Alabama recruiting wants to live because they got one dude in the boat, Deontay Lawson, who his coach thinks could be the next C.J. Mosley. And at six foot three, 213 pounds and growing, maybe he could be, maybe he couldn't be. He's listed as an outside linebacker, might play inside linebacker at Alabama. Shout out to Bama Online and Hank South who wrote a story about what makes Alabama commit Deontay Lawson special to which the punch is because he's the only one and that's really what it's about because look I'm doing this thing where I'm taking a look at recruiting because recruiting continues to evolve and it's going and Ohio State is just setting a bar very high in that they could finish with the best college football class of all time if they continue at this pace with 14 commits they are 20 plus points clear of Clemson at number two in the rankings with 14 in the boat in March what are we doing? Those are Alabama numbers. Or at least that's what we used to think, right? Because if you look at the rankings, you got to scroll and scroll and scroll before you will find Alabama at number 49 with one commit and ranked number 10 out of 14 teams in the SEC. We're talking about Kentucky and Missouri have higher rankings than Alabama. It's just not a thing we're used to saying. Again, big asterisks here. Big it's March thing here. Big, big, it's, well, not time to ramp up yet, but that's kind of the point here. Because we're in this unprecedented age in all of sports, we're also not going to get spring football. Not in the way that we're used to, at least. And we are not going to have spring football games, at least in the SEC. And I would I would think we wouldn't have spring football games at all, period. I just think that's a that's going to be across the board. But in thinking about that, that's usually where Alabama, like a lot of Power Fives, do a lot of recruiting. But how did they lose out to number 49? How did they get ranked just inside the top 50? When we're used to being inside the top 5, like an order of 10. What? Well, they had three in a boat. Latrell McCutcheon, who decided he was going to reopen his recruitment following a visit to Oklahoma. 
He was the first commitment in the boat last June, so, you, you know, you thought that made a big deal. But Saban doesn't really recruit him like that. It was Banks that recruits him like that. Maybe that'll change. And then, the big one, the only 2021 class quarterback that they had, Drake May, flipped his recruitment, flipped his commitment to North Carolina. Mac Brown just coming here to steal all your recruits, man. We all knew that Mac Brown could recruit down there in Texas. Seems like he's recruiting in North Carolina, which has... As much football tradition as Clemson. Less than. I mean, Clemson at least gets to play on national championship. What is going on over there? And now you got Mac Brown going into Tuscaloosa to take out a kid? Now I get it. You're going to be like, yo, Luke May played in North Carolina. He's, you know, his little brother. Naturally go to North Carolina. If that wasn't enough, his daddy played for Mac Brown at North Carolina way back when. It made a lot of sense. S still Bama. You're still a quarterback. You're still a quarterback going to Bama. And I get it. You're not as concerned about your quarterback recruiting in 2021 year because you got Bryce Young in the 2020 year for your Alabama, but you still need a quarterback. And because most of the quarterbacks in the 21 class that you would want are either spoken for or in a two-horse race with Oklahoma and LSU, where Oklahoma seems to have the lead, his name being Caleb Williams, you can understand how if you're an Alabama fan, maybe you're not worrying yet because you know how this works and you know that Nick Saban is the wrong dude to bet against. But in March, especially right now, this would be weird. Like, forget what the content wars are looking like right now for us on the sports front. And remember that this is Alabama, that this is Nick Saban, that that's Steve Sarkeesian. I'm not used to seeing 49 next to their name ever, dog. Like, it's not a thing that happens. How did Alabama fall this far? I think it's a number of things, right? But it ain't what it was last year. It's certainly not you lost a bunch of assistant coaches to retain all the dudes that you want. You know, even most of y'all Bama fans would be the first ones to tell us all, hey, Scott Cochran is not really what it was down here. We would rather have somebody else in that job. And they got somebody else in that job. Shout out David Blue. But you don't want to see 49 next to Alabama's name ever. You would expect them to at least be keeping pace with Oregon and Texas with six commits, right, inside the top 10. But they're not even doing that, dog. Oklahoma ain't necessarily doing that much better, but they're three times as good as Alabama, at least when we're counting commits. And Oklahoma is trending in the right direction for the top-rated quarterback in the country. When that dude, if that dude, decides to flip the switch and turn it to Oklahoma, right back in business, baby. Right? That's how that's going to work. Meanwhile, Alabama's going to have to go and either continue to recruit Drake May, which I think they will, or go get themselves a Caden Salter, who might be big into Arkansas right now. There's a number of guys you go try, go, you try to go get, but you obviously wanted the dude that you wanted. I find all this to be remarkably interesting, as I find much in recruiting to be remarkably interesting, because the narrative has been for so long that Nick Saban can close, but can he close from a mile away? And that's what it's looking like. Like, forget about Alabama winning the recruiting title this year. It ain't happening. Forget about them keeping pace with Clemson this year. It ain't happening. The way that Alabama would have to do that was to steal the best recruits from other classes, and while you can do that to a couple of places, you're not going to be able to do that to like seven there's not a chance. You know, I mean, it's it's a it's a 6-9 joke at this point for Bama. So Saban ought to be doing what it seems that Ohio State and their and Brian Day staff are doing and get on the horn and do what he does best, which is go and lock up some of these kiddos. He was helped tremendously in the 2019 class by a couple of deep commitments that recommitted, Trey Sanders and Evan Neal. I don't think you're going to have that luxury this year. You're going to have to make sure that everybody that goes into the boat this time stays in the boat because you're so far behind and you're getting even further behind as Ohio State continues to open a lead. We'll see what this means for some. But like Lincoln Riley out there fishing and, and stuff and basically turning this into an extended vacation, fine. But whatever it is, just know that Ohio State out there working at a time when we all think that the rest of y'all should really be working. And it's going to show up in July whether or not y'all been working. And it's going to show up in September, October, November when y'all been working. And certainly when we do the tally in an early signing period where we get a really good sense of who put together an absolutely outstanding recruiting class. I'm not going to bet against Nick Saban. I'm just going to say that uh, maybe you need a stimulus package right now because we had DEFCON 1. Deuces.